Dear Evelyn, look over the vastness of mankind's achievements, civilization and cooperation, scientific discoveries that are uncovering nature's secrets, capitalism and ever-growing riches, technological innovations that make us omniscient, omnipotent and all but deified by our self-endowed powers. How could we not progress forever? We are a unique species of animal, nature's ultimate flowering. Wrong. Most people today think they belong to a species that can be master of its destiny. This is faith, not science. We do not speak of a time when whales or gorillas will be masters of their destinies. Why then humans? This is the opening to John Gray's Straw Dogs. He argues in both this book and in the later book, The Silence of Animals, that the concept of humanism is incorrect. He defines this as the view that humans are special and capable of progress, progress beyond our basic biological urges. Gray argues that historically there are two causes of humanism. The first, paradoxically, is Christianity, which has of course been rejected by most humanists, but the religious conception of sapiens as a chosen people has remained. The second is science, where the dramatic progress in knowledge has fooled many humanists into believing that we can progress in all areas of our collective lives. Bring these together and we have humanism in its modern form. John Gray argues that especially the progress in knowledge due to science has misled many of us into believing that humanity can progress in our moral and social behaviours as well. But on the contrary, says Gray, the very progress in science has enabled us to discover how bound by our own biology we really are. We cannot be rational about morality because our brains didn't evolve to be rational but instead to value things that will help us reproduce, not that enable us to value truth or positive moral behaviour. In fact, argues Gray, the history of morality is the history of changing attitudes. We used to think that homosexuality was wrong, and now we think inequality is unjust. Morality alters with the changing of the wind. For instance, with the progress in medicine, famine and disease have decreased but only to be replaced by more effective mass murder, as our weapons have improved. Progress in technology, argues Gray, is not the same as progress in behaviour. As he writes, ideas of justice are as timeless as fashions and hats. The core of Gray's argument is that science has revealed the total ordinariness of Homo sapiens. In fact, the very term person, which denotes something different from the biological order, is misleading. We are no different from other creatures. We are conscious, just as they. We have inner lives, just as they. After all, each one of us has the same origin, the Darwinian primordial soup. For example, Gray argues that on the species-wide level, we can be understood in the same way as we understand rats or rabbits. To demonstrate this, Gray examines population trends. It is common for humanists to argue that our population boom will simply continue, but this is demonstrably false, says Gray, when we consider that sapiens are just like all other animals. Just as there are spikes in the populations of rabbits and rats, there are also troughs. Our population, just like others, responds to stress and scarcity. Fertility is already dropping, and soon, perhaps due to environmental pressures, our population will dramatically decrease. It is human arrogance, says Gray, to think that humans are any different to any other overexpanded species. As he writes, humans are like any other plague animal. They cannot destroy the earth, but they can easily wreck the environment that sustains them. John Gray's argument can be summed up like this. We have been deluded into believing in progress due to science's progress in knowledge, but science reveals to us that we are in no way capable of breaking from our biological urges, and history shows us that we are in no way capable of progress. Whilst Gray is, I would argue, right in his assertion that we cannot progress, 
I would argue he is wrong in his assertion that we are just another animal. For one thing, the historian Yuval Noah Harari agrees with Gray that humans are not special on the individual level. He argues that we are unique when seen collectively, in our ability to build fictions, be that religions, moralities, or limited liability companies. It seems to me that humanism is misguided in some of its claims, and critics of Gray like Terry Eagleton, who argue that Gray is attacking a form of humanism long since dead, may be missing the point. You see, a de-anthropomorphized view of nature is long overdue, and the fight for that view is still very much continuing. In fact, as Ian Ground argued in the Times Literary Supplement just the other week, we are too often prone to thinking of animals only in relation to ourselves, failing to admit that the human way of thinking may not be the only way. As he writes, it is not uncommon for philosophers to deny that any non-linguistic animals really have beliefs, are conscious, or even perceive the world. Empirical evidence and testimony to the contrary are treated as mere curiosities. The fact is that the debate still rages. Humans may or may not be special. But I think the key insight that John Gray gives us is that we are not alone in the world, and not separate from it, either. Sweet dreams. New end screen. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it. Now, please do, after watching this, go and read John Gray's actual book. It will blow your mind. It is fantastic. Straw Dogs. And then after that, maybe The Silence of Animals, or indeed uh, The Soul of the Marionette is really, really good as well. Um, excellent. Thank you for watching. I will see you hopefully next week.